So, okay, without further ado, I'm going to um, uh, introduce you our next presenter, Dr. Chong Pan Pan. I'm happy to present. She's part of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. She herself, she's not a surgeon, uh, she's not a, a, a doctor, but she is a, a, a scientist uh, working in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. So uh, she is a senior lecturer right now uh, over there. She did her PhD in University of Malaya and her work has uh, namely um, looked into um, uh, tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Now, um, the areas of her expertise uh, include nascent stem cells. Uh, she does work in um, arthritis and her latest work is looking at extra uh, cellular vesicles uh, from platelets, uh, having derived them uh, for the treatment uh, of um, uh, arthritis. Uh, she has uh, published a number of works, um, and uh, I believe she won quite a number of awards, including the um, L'Oreal uh, Women Award, as well as a number of uh, Best Paper Investigations and Best Paper Award, including the one in uh, the, um, the Cartilage Research Society's, uh, Asian Cartilage Research Society in Beijing. Um, so, without further ado, um, Dr. Chang, um, you have the floor. Thank you, Prof. Kamaru. Uh, let me share the screen first. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you, the organizer, to organize this event, and also the Kai introduction for Prof. Tungku Kamaru. Uh, I would to, so this morning, I would like to share with you all about my research journey. Actually, it's a long journey. How I use the biologic, bi biological therapies for articular cartilage repair from the basic research to the clinical outcome. Uh, first of all, I would like to give a little bit introduction about the cartilage regeneration techniques. As you can see from the slide here, um, usually when the cartilage has the damage, the surgeon will do the, um, my, uh, the, uh, the departments in order to remove all the unhealthy cartilage. And then followed by the microfracture in order for the bone marrow to be, to be released from the subcontrol bone. Then after that, they have a technology we call autologous chondrocyte implantation, meaning we transplant the chondrocyte at the defect area and then we uh, cover with the periosteal flat and suture with the fibrin crew. Then latest technology, they use the scaffold. So as you can see here uh, in the figure E is the messy, we call messy. So cells sit in the scaffold. This scaffold can be many type, uh, can be LG or etc. So the traditional tra uh, the treatments for the cartridge damage is the SCT. But however, the problem for this technique is it will cause the donor side mobility. Or if let's say the cartilage is unhealthy, we cannot harvest the control side to, for the further transplantation as well. That's why uh, the latest technology, uh, some of the researcher proposed to use the mesenchymal stem cell. Because this MSC have the ability to differentiate to the uh, different cell type. So for me, I focus on this cartilage. So the generation for the cartilage is just a simple diagram as you can see here. First of all, we harvest the mesenchymal stem cell from the patients, and then we expand the cell in vitro. Then we seed the cell inside the scaffold, let it grow for certain until certain number of the cell. Then we transplant back to the patient. So this is the outline for my today talk. Um, I will share with you how we started our fundamental research from in vitro, and then how we applied the result to animal study. Then I also have done some study about the human osteoarthritis, followed by the clinical service that we provided to the OA patients. Um, as we know, the gold standard for us to isolate the mesenchymal stem cell is the bone marrow. However, the bone marrow is an invasive technique. So I have uh, done some study used to get an alternative source. So in this study, we use the human peripheral blood. So we have compared the um, cell morphology from the bone marrow and also the, uh, the peripheral blood divide MSC, as you can see in the figure one. They are, um, are most likely a spindle sheet of fibroblasts. And then we also have done the uh, flow saturated analysis 
to check for the CD marker. As we, as we all know, MSC, they express the CD29 positive, 105 positive, 166 positive. However, it's negative for 34 and 45. So both result for the PPMSC and PMSC is about the comparable. We also check for the sulfated glycoaminoglycans. This is secreted by the chondrocyte. When we differentiate the mesenchymal stem cell under the differentiation, we call chondrogen differentiation, the cell will secrete this gap. And so we have checked from day one, day three, until day five. So uh, this, this one, I think you all can see my cursor, right? Okay. So you can see um, this is control side and this is the bone marrow and peripheral blood. So actually peripheral blood can secrete is the comparable uh, get as compared to the gold standard resource, the bone marrow. And we also have done the safari old standing, which is secreted by the control side. So we have used the human control side and then we compare with the bone marrow, divide MSC and also the PP MSC. So we have done, uh, we have published our research in this paper, actually it's some time ago, nine years ago in uh, 2012. Um, so basically uh, we show that the human preferable device MSC can demonstrate a similar characteristic and controgen differentiation potential to the bone marrow device MSC. So after that, we also have further analyzed uh, about the factor influencing the successful isolation of this PP MSC. Because during that time, uh, we go back to 2012, some researchers they have published uh, the research outcome that they're saying that there is no MSC in the peripheral blood. Or even some researchers, they say, yes, they have, but with very really low amount of the MSC. That's why we have tried to do some factor uh, to check is what is the factor actually really uh, affect the outcome of this isolation. We have checked about the age, we check about the age, we check about the female or male. We also have uh, go through the races, uh, Malay, Chinese, Indians, and also sample uh, bone marrow and peripheral blood, and also the volume, comorbidities, and also the habit. Actually, as you can see, the P value here, they all are non significant. So that means actually this is, the, this is not the main factor to effect the successful rate for us to isolate the MSC from the peripheral blood. So actually why people, I mean it's about 10 years ago, like why at that time the people cannot get, actually without all the main problem is the contamination problem. So once your sample is contaminated, as you can see all the, all the small, small talk in the picture here are the bacteria or even the yeast. That's why using the aesthetic technique when you uh, collect the blood from the patient is very really important. The contamination can come from the environment and even the skin of the patient. So now we move off to the animal study. We have tried to compare the uh, controgenic pre-differentiated and undifferentiated MSC, meaning we have the MSC and then we differentiate the cell become a control site. We compare this one. Actually, which one is good for the articular cartilage repair in the rabbit model? So we create the defect. We open, we open the knee. We create the defect using this control tone. As you can see in the figure four here, the small, small uh, circle here. So uh, after we chop, we will remove the cartilage. And then we sit this one. This is the cell inside this, this look like the agar look, but actually it's an alginate, we call it as an alginate pig, it's a scaffold for us to carry the cell uh, to, the trans, uh, to the defect area. After that, we seal the defect area using the periosteal fat. So we have um, done the uh, morphology observations. As you can see uh, in the figure A here is the defect, it's really always the defect. And then our right knee, in, I mean, in the same rabbit, right knee, we have uh, treated using the uh, MSC, CMSC, and left is a control, that means also a defect, but untreated. So we have compared the duration time for three months and also the six months. So uh, if based on this quality observation, you can see basically six months is better than the three months. So now we move on to the quantitative study. So we have done the Brixper score, Audrey score, and get through protein analysis. We compare the three months and six months. 
So we contact the untreated knee and the treated. But if you say at the beginning, after three months, right, um, it's only can see the significance using the audit score. So the result uh, told us that actually for this regenerative uh, processing, will take a longer time, about six months. So when we move on to six months, we can see there is a significant difference when we treated the knee and without the treatment. However, when we compare the MSC with the controgenic difference uh, treated MSC, basically there is no differences. That means we no need to use any chemicals or any mechanical transduction to induce the MSC become the chronocyte, then we transplant because both results are comparable. So this is the histology score. So uh, as I said, the six months is better than the three months. We also have published uh, this research finding. Uh, so as I mentioned just now, um, you either use the MSC or CMSC, they have the potential to prepare the healing as compared to the cartilage defect that without any treatment. So the one uh, is we have put, uh, we have completed some times ago that when we use the scaffold, but if you use a scaffold, that means it's a two stages surgery. Um, you need to open the knee again to transplant the uh, the scaffold sit up the cell sit up with the scaffold. So for for the latest technology, we try to use some just an injection. That means uh, we just use the cell the cell suspension in the string, we just do intra-articular injection to the knee defect area. So for this, uh, this model, we use the anterior crusade ligament transaction uh, uh, OF red. So we just cut the, the SCLT. And then this is uh, it's just already a well attached OF red model. So, and then we have treated this uh, red. We using different uh, sources of the cell. Uh, as I mentioned, we have done the PBMSC, peripheral PBMSC, and also bone marrow. As you can see, actually, even um, after we treat on uh, improve our technology, our PBMSC result even came better than the BMMSC. Um, this is uh, my uh, my student the latest study. Actually, we also uh, have done some study using the uh, peripheral PBMSC perivascular stem cell. So this is another story. I'm not going to share today, but basically, um, as I said that, so the latest technology, we have moved to the intra-articular uh, intra injection instead of using the scaffold sitting with the cell. Now we move on to the uh, human. So we, we try to understand, uh, actually, what is the relationship between the highlight cartilage and the subcondyl bone regions in the patient with the knee OA? Because Previously, we all talked that this is the cartilage problem. So what is the relationship in between these components? So first of all, I would like to give a little bit introduction about the component of this articular cartilage. As you can see, um, basically the articular cartilage has about 70 to 80% of the fluid. And for the cellular matrix, they have polycellular cellular matrix and also the extracellular matrix, uh, which is about 20%. And the cell is only about 1% to 2%. So this is the osteochondrine unit. Uh, basically, the cartilage, they have the superficial uh, zone, middle zone, and deep zone. And after that, there will be the calcified cart 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 cartilage, followed by the subcontrol bone. So this is the diagram. So subcontrol bone, basically, uh, you can see, uh, become more denser. Time mark uh, is formed by the collagen fiber from the cartilage. So now we talk, talk about the OA. As we know, um, OA basically is the bone end rub together, uh, and then the cartilage become thin or even worn up. So we have different stage from stage one, two, three, four. And then when the patient at the final stage, they have to go for the total knee replacement. So in this study, uh, we harvested this one, the dissected area, the, uh, this osteochondral unit for, for us for the, for the study. So basically, we want to understand what is the interplay of highlight cardiac loss and also the subcondral bone changes in the patient with the ON knee. And we follow by the evaluations of the biosynthesis of the isolated ON chondrocyte uh, using uh, different dynamic compression strengths and loading durations. So um, we first of all, when we have this uh, osteochondral unit uh, cartilage, 
we use this extreme CT to do some image, uh, uh, imaging analysis, and then we will grade it at different grades and also different bone volume density. Then from this uh, osseal control unit, we harvest the cartilage for further analysis. And here, this is the control site. Actually, we also have done some analysis uh, for the osseal site and the subcontrol bone. That one is another story I'm not going to share here. And then for the control site, we further to use a bioreactor. We have compressed the cell uh, vertically using uh, different percentages, 10%, 20%, and different durations. So we want to see what happened when we compress the cell. Even they are unhealthy, we so-called an OA control site. So this is the outcome uh, from the extreme CT, the imaging. As you can see, we grid the things as um, grid A normal. Grid B is the softening and swelling of the cartilage or is the fragmentations or of the fissure of the area that does not reach some control point. And the C is the relations of cartilage down to the point. So you can, as you can see here. And then we check for the uh, region of interest. We check for the, uh, the, the average of the bone density. So um, based on the quantitative analysis, we noticed that actually, sorry. Okay. Um, the grid A actually that is a significant when we compare the grid A with the grid C, that means there is a severe damage for the cartilage. And also there is a significant difference when we compare B and C and C and A. So um, this one is the control site that we have harvested. We isolate the cell, we mince the cartilage, um, and then we digest with the uh, collagen, collagenase, <clears throat> and then we isolate the cell. So from the cell, we sit inside this uh, agarose scaffold, and then we compress this uh, agarose, seated, this cell seated agarose scaffold, and then using this power reactor, <clears throat> we compress it um, for different time and also different strengths. So um, after we isolate the control side, of course, we need to make sure that the cells are control side. That's why we have done some gene expression uh, to check for the control side specific, uh, the control side or cartilage specific genes. So both are, uh, so they all are expressed the genes. So this is the cell. This is the control sites. Uh, we isolated from the ON, ONE cartilage. And then we also have done the suffering O standing that secreted the suffering O. So when, after we compress uh, until day two and day, day eight, basically, um, this is the SCM images. We actually, we, there is no um, really obvious differences. Basically, it just uh, look like a circle. So then what we have done is we further to do some suffering all standing. So as you can see, when we throw up the if, uh, different time, different duration, so there will be a higher secretion of the audio can of, uh, for the complex cell. So another one, um, we also check for the this call we so called pearly cellular matrix. This one is a matrix secreted by the control site, and then it will surround the control site, and then after that it will be surrounded by the extra cellular matrix. So in this case, we use the fluorescent dyes, the blue stain we stand for the nucleus, and this green color is the peripheral cellular matrix uh, with the green color we stand for we stand for the collagen type six. So um, actually, it's not only one cell, but we have done many, many cells. We use the image J to analyze, to analyze all the cells, single cell. So based on the quantitative um, data analysis, basically our conclusion is when we compress the cell for a longer time, it means uh, from compared with the four days and eight days, the eight day has shown the higher secretion of the collagen type six. And when we increase the compression from 10% to 20%, also significant higher. So basically, uh, we also have published uh, the risk, this outcome in this paper, Mechanical Compression Controls, the Biosynthesis of the uh, Human Osteoarthritis Control Site in Vitro. Um, so basically, um, this study told us that 
when we treat for the air, actually we have to target actually is both subcontrol bone and not merely of the cartilage. Even the cartilage in the OA knee, actually they still are, have the ability to secrete the polycellular matrix. So that's why um, when we using the selected compression uh, biosynthetic activity, actually it's very uh, important for us to recover the control site. So in another way to say that actually exercise or mechanical transition also good for the uh, patient with the osteoarthritis. And also, we also have done, uh, this is a, a small research paper. We have done the uh, early SELT in the red. So because we noticed that even when we created the SELT red model, we can observe that the sub point also have the changes even started from week one, week two, and week three. So if you're interested, you can go for this paper. And now we move on to the clinical trial. So this is the... Um, the research that we have done, uh, actually not only me, also I from the Pop Tungo Kamatum, we all are, are in the one team tissue engineering group. We have done the in vitro study, control side, one merit one MSD, preferred to MSD, or even control, uh, control genetic differentiation. And then we move to the animal study using different uh, different cell type, different 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 scaffold. And then now we move on to the beta trial. So uh, based on our previous model, parallel risk concentrate, this one can enhance the MSD capacity to repair the focal cartridge injury in the rabbit. Um, we have introduced the, the technology to the clinical trial. Of course, when we move to the clinical study service, we need this one so-called the GMP lab. So we have this ISO 5 and class, one, class 100 grade B the GMP lab in our Nocera. And this lab also is already certified by the NPRS since 2017. And then we also have done the latest uh, audit uh, early of this year. So um, this actually our product is this uh, parallel extracellular vesicle. So I think you all know about the pellets. Um, so our technology is we try to activate the pellets and release the small, small extracellular vesicle. So as you compare the size, the pellet is about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 nanometer. But when we move to the small particle, uh, it's just only 100, and, about 100, to, uh, 100 to 800 nanometer. Because usually uh, this pellet will carry a lot of growth factor. However, if you want uh, the growth factor to be released by this pellet, uh, naturally, it will take a longer time. That's why when we um, activate it become the smaller molecule, it will faster the process to release the growth factor. For example, the alpha granule, this kind of things. And this is the, some of the benefit that can promote the uh, cell regeneration anti inflammation so this is the uh, PV, uh, PV service that we have provided in our labs. We have launched this in uh, 2018. So basically we need to collect the blood from the patients, either three or four tubes, about 25 meals. And then we process the blood using our GMP facility. And then uh, this one will take about 90 minutes. And then final product in the streams form, uh, everything in, in the sterile, uh, sterile package. And then we will deliver to the clinic for the injections. So the whole process will take about 18 minutes. And then this one actually we meant for the treatment for the patients in the stage one and two OA. Okay, this is the outcome from the, our patient. Uh, basically, you can see the outcome is the anti my right knee is okay, better now after injection, very good, can go market and exercise, definitely less pain now. So we also have done some uh, scrolling, so we can see the improvement as well. And this is uh, the, the comparison between the pre and post treatments. So um, also we can see the certifications have increased, the scoring increased. And then we also have our industry partner. Of course, we are not only just selling our product uh, in the government hospital. We also work, work, uh, wish to work with the private uh, industry partner to introduce our product to the private clinic. So uh, when we have this um, company to approach us, 
Of course, they want to know how good of our product is. This is not not sufficient that we just pass them the our whatever our publication, whatever our clinical data are outcome to them. For them, the good the good proof is that they send their patient to us. So from this case, they even send their CEO relative to us and test for our product. And then, uh, as you can see, this is the, the feedback from this auntie. The auntie is the radio of the of the CEO. So he says, suddenly you cover and no pants, and this technology is very good. Because of this outcome, so the company have a lot of confidence with our product, and then we have start our cooperation, and then to apply a floor plan, and even try to introduce our product to the private clinic. And even one of our uh, patients also interviewed by this uh, KV, uh, kidney TV. So basically, this patient said after injection, he feel like uh, he's got the knee like a bionic knee. He he got this uh, actually it's a spot injury. Uh, so that's why he feel after injected, uh, feel like it's a bionic knee, robot knee. And this is uh, another patient is a hiker. He have this teratom cartilage damage during the hiking. So um, the surgeons have done the deployment to remove the cartilage. And then we have follow up, we have done a follow up cases for this patient uh, because of this one, he had done three injections of the PV at different time points. Uh, and then after six months, we can see the cartilage go even need. And then after that, after six months, he can go back to the low impact exercise like cycling. And then after 18 months, he can go back for his he habit, he, he hobby for the hiking. So besides the knee OA, um, this PEV also can use for plantar fasciitis, uh, tennis album, or OCD diarrhea. So, so far we have done uh, 100 plus injections, and most of them are essentially from our department, you can see from the knee department, from the sport injury department. And this is the, another case uh, for the plantar fasciitis. As you can see, after uh, he had done the injections for after four days, he still got a little bit pain. But nine days, no pain. And after 24 days, can start running for one kilometer. This patient actually, he used to go for marathon, the full marathon. So because of different prices, he had to stop. But after 24 days, he can start again. One km, after 40, 40 days, three km, so far no pain. And then after 50 days, he started back to five km. So hopefully we hope that um, he can really go back to his marathon as well. So our PB also have won the award uh, during this uh, innovation forum in 2018. So this is the flyer about our PEV. If any uh, you of us are interested for this treatment or any patient of your patient interested, feel free to contact us. Uh, this is my staff number. And actually, as I mentioned, PEV is not only uh, to treat the OA, so it takes other conditions as well. But basically, uh, the patient have to come to see uh, our clinicians, let them to diagnose first whether you are suitable for the treatment or not. So this is my research team. Uh, or anything, you can uh, send my email to me as well. So um, PEV, actually, we have launched this about three years ago. So now we want to introduce um, a, a new product or we call product, second, second product or version two, like our iPhone. I will have version one until uh, iPhone 13 or 14. So we also have our product version one and version two. So this version two, we would, we would like to combine uh, the PV with the PVMSC. As, as you can see, uh, based on my previous uh, presentation, we have done a lot of study. So we would like to promote this PV with the MSC. So that's why um, in the early of this year, we have submitted this grant application for the PRGS. Uh, I also have uh, presented to the KPT uh, in the 1st of April. Um, they haven't released the result yet. Uh, finger crossed, I hope we can get this grant. Then we can start for our next service, uh, the PEV combined with the PBMC. So um, I would like to acknowledge all the people here because this is, this is the, a long journey and this is not my own effort. It's involved a lot of people from clinicians, from the engineer, from the scientists, from the student, and even the lab, the lab technician, especially my team. Thank, uh, I would like to thank you very much for all of that. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you.
Let me stop screen. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chong. I think you've gone a bit off limit already. Um, we've got a number of questions here. Uh, we'll try to answer all of them. Otherwise, you need to answer online, yeah? So, Dr. Chong, the first question they ask is, uh, Dr. Chong, uh, what is your view on the pros and cons of clinical use of MSC exosome compared with uh, using live cells? What is your view on the pro and con of clinical use of MSC exosome compared using the live cell? Yeah. Um, so, first thing I'm not sure about what is the live cell here means, maybe I will assume is the MSC. Or possibly. Well. Yeah, because I'm not sure what is the live cells here. So, if let's say it's MSC, um, actually, uh, I, th I, I think I will compare four things up. Uh, I will compare MSC exosome, MSC, uh, PV, uh, PV divide, uh, uh, PV divide, extracellular vesicle, and EV. So as I mentioned just now, we start from a big, we start from a big, big component. So pellet or the cell. Because the cell or either the pellet or cell is big, so for them to release the growth factor or anti-inflammation factors, I'm talking that kind of thing, it will take a longer time. That means naturally for them to release, it will take a longer time. But if you focus on just a small component, so this component will can carry a smaller particular that will be faster to deliver to the healing, the defect area side in order to improve the healing. So in other words, I will say that um, the, 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 the outcome the outcome when we, the pro, maybe the pro, when we use the smaller component will be better than a bigger component. Ah. The okay. Cro okay. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, moving along, um, Dr. Chong, um, let's talk about this um, by this Dr. Justin Wang. Uh, he said, hi, Dr. Chong, is there a difference between the time taken to differentiate MSC to cell type required in 2012 compared to now? No matter how 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 fast or how short you want to shorten it, it still will take, will take about two years. So that's why based on our study, we noticed that um, actually without the differentiated the cell, you just use the MSC, the outcome actually is comparable with the differentiated cell. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we've got time only for one more question. Um, I hope that you can answer the other questions in the uh, answer uh, the type answer all right uh, section. So I'll take. The last question, which I think is uh, most um, interesting, I suppose, uh, and probably something that's quite controversial even today. So, dear Prof, good work. Does MSC give rise, uh, give rise so, to other tissue? That's number one. Prof McCaskey from Cambridge Tissue Engineering Centre said stem cell does not work. Please um, basically comment. And third question she had put, put in, in is, I had been to uh, Chira Kyoto where they won the Nobel Prize. Uh, basically talking about, uh, about uh, the, uh, the Nobel Prize winner for stem cells. And why don't you use IPSC? Okay. Okay. First first question is, yes, uh, the MSC can give rise to other cells um, because my my research interest on the control side. So that's why I, my today talk is only concentrated, uh, on, only focused on the control side. Of course, the MSC can differentiate become the adipocyte or even the ostracide. Okay. Second question. Um, I'm not sure why they say the stem cell does not work. Actually, first thing, my first question is what type of the stem cell? There is many stem cell. Adult stem cell, uh, adult stem cell, induced pluripotent stem cell, and boring stem cell, or even after that, we can further go down to pluripotent stem cell, uni stem cell, totally potent stem cell, multipotent stem cell. So I'm not sure what is the stem cell here means, but a lot of people have published their stem cell work uh, already in the in the in the research research database. So I think there is no doubt about it. Maybe um I need to maybe for this Dr. Chan, I need to further discuss with the view. We need to be more focused actually what what is the specific stem cell that means does not work. All right, I move to another one. Okay, yeah, uh, this, this is uh, Prof Yamanaka. He won the Nobel Prize for his uh, work in IPSC. So why I don't want to use IPSC? So, so IPSC actually stands for the Induced Prepotent Stem Cell. 
So how they induce basically they need to use the uh the they need to um uh in they need to fuse the something like the gene the gene inside the stem cell in order change the somatic cell become the totally uh fully potent. So uh for for my my study uh I I use is the autologous. Is the autologous that means I harvest the cell from the patient itself directly. And then I just grow it in vitro. I didn't manipulate the cell because when you manipulate the cell, manipulate means you you insert certain gene into your cell. This cell has the tendency to become teratoma. It means the cell may may form the may form the cancer cell as well. So there is a risk there. I'm not saying that it's not good, but because the cell has become a prepotent, uh, so it can it can form other cell as well to to be this to be the safe to our patient because we we cannot do something that just simply implant to the patient and then the cell after that change to the, the cancer cell cannot we need to have the com uh, have the hundred percent to sure that our cell is safe that's why we use the autologous the cell come for the patient patient we go with in vitro we, we just um, uh, we actually we didn't manipulate the cell as well we just grow it uh, we try our method uh, uh, grow the cell or even make the cell become smaller, the pellet becomes smaller. So this one I will feel because of the safety. Because of the safety, that's why we chose autologous MSC in this of the IPSC. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. We've run out of time. It's now yeah. 10 past 9. Um, I, I, I'm so sorry I cannot allow the other questions to be asked uh, on forum. So Dr. Chong, uh, if you could please uh, reply to the group here, right, uh, for all these answers. Um, if you have any further questions uh, for both Dr. Chong as well as uh, Dr. Nabila, I think you've got their emails, uh, they've, they've actually presented here, or you can contact the moderator, uh, which is um, Dr. Shams Ami. Eh? Okay, so thank you so much. Um, I think that's the end of our session. Um, I cannot find Dr. Shams here, so I assume that we're going to just lock off from here. Um, let's have a very good, uh, productive time. Um, thank you all. You've been a great audience. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. The last question, uh, the price is about 1,000 UMMC. Yeah.